Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another easy DIY install. As you know, we just got through completing a three-part series on crucial, high-priority stuff any RVer should be carrying with them at all times, regardless of what kind of RV you own. In part one, I said every RVer should be carrying critical, high-priority parts so that if you get stuck somewhere or you, you don't want to have to order it and wait or go to the store and hunt for it, they may have it, they may not have it, you need to have those parts. Well, for us, a water pump is a critical part because we use it all the time. And as bad luck would have it, on our way up here to Maine for the summer, the very last campground that we stayed at, the water pump went out. But I carry a spare with me. So today, I'm going to show you how we do this install of a new water pump. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. Our water pump is located in the wet bay. So let's go to the wet bay and we'll pick it up from there. Okay, so here we are at the wet bay. Replacing a water pump really is quite easy. Um, it runs on 12 volt, okay? So you don't, have a, you don't have a lot of high voltage here. And so you don't have to worry about, you know, disconnecting from the pedestal and all those kinds of things. A second thing is, is uh, some people will say, you know, since I have to replace my water pump, I'm gonna put a bigger volume uh, water pump. That could be a problem because your coach as it stands now from the factory is wired to handle a certain amperage of a water pump, okay? Like our pump, it is a three GPM, three gallons per minute, and it draws 7.5 amps, and it has a 10 amp fuse, okay? So you don't wanna go to a much larger water pump that's gonna draw more amperage and possibly cause electrical problems. So be very aware of that. Don't be tricked into thinking, well, I'm gonna go with a bigger pump that's gonna draw more amps and your wiring or your fuse system is not capable of handling that. So that's something to really pay attention to. Now we're gonna be replacing our pump with a new SureFlow, okay? This is the exact same model that we currently have. Now Joni's gonna be doing the, the camera work here and we're in a, little, we're in a real tight area and you can see here, I have added a special fitting here. I've taken all the insulation off. I've insulated all of my pipe I've up in here. I've done a full video, comprehensive video on what I did to the wet bay before we went on the road. Uh, you can watch that right up here and it'll explain all what I did and why I did it. But for today, we're gonna be working on just this small little area and uh, we're gonna try to give you the best view possible. One of the biggest reasons of a failure of a water pump is this bowl right here, this screen, okay? You can see that I still have the water on and I did that on purpose because I wanted to show you the first thing we're going to do. See this little valve right here? This is the valve that brings the water from the fresh water tank. The water pump only pumps water from your fresh water tank because when we start unhooking this, we are going to get water down in here, and that's why I put the towel here. One of the biggest reasons a water pump will fail is that because it's not sanitized correctly, or this bowl right here gets all clogged up. Now, Joni and I, we use our water pump and our fresh water tank all the time, okay? We sanitize our fresh water tank at least once a year, but usually twice a year. And this is another reason why a water softener is so important. A water softener, again, that I mentioned in our three-part series, a water softener will keep all that calcium buildup and deposits and all that off of all your lines, the water pump, your fresh water tank, your hot water heater, all that stuff. So again, a water softener is very important. But this water pump is nine years old. It's pretty well done its job. If you look at the diagram right here, you'll see a schematic and a breakdown of all the parts of what makes up this water pump. So it really can only be basically two things. It can be the motor 
or it can be the, the pressure head assembly. I mean, you can see all those different pieces in there. I did look into the fact, well, maybe I could just buy the spare parts and, and fix this thing, okay? I found the parts online, but by the time you add up all the different parts, it was going to be about 50 bucks or so. <laughs> and if I buy a whole brand new assembly, I think it was like 72 or 78. And I get brand new everything, motor, the pressure head, all of that. So I thought, that's what I'm going to do. That's the smart thing to do. So since I've decided just to replace the whole thing, here's what we're going to do. We're going to come in here and disconnect the wiring and just kind of get it out of the way. And the pump itself is held on by these rubber grommet mounts. You see how that's flexible? That's supposed to be like that. So I'm going to, it has one, two, three, four bolts over here. I have to remove those screws. I have to unscrew this. This is the plex tubing that feeds the water to the pump. This is the flow. This is always supposed to be hand tight. And as you can see, it is hand tight. So we're going to undo this. We're going to undo my additional part that I added here so I can put a quick disconnect and run a hose here. Again, you can see that in my full water video. And we're going to undo that right here. And you can see that these wires are in the way and they're held together by a little zip tie. So I'm just gonna cut that off. Okay, so I've got these loose, but I'm still gonna keep it mounted so I can take this off right here. And I'm gonna undo this one. Okay, that's loose. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the rest of these screws. Okay, there's the old pump. We're going to remove this bowl and reuse this on the new pump. We're going to take this off and put it on the new pump. And there's the two pieces that we'll put on the new pump. Now, as I told you earlier, we sanitize our uh, fresh water tank all the time. Usually once every six months or so, even though we use it a lot. It's just a good thing to do. But I also checked this bowl. And you can see inside this bowl, it has a screen. Okay, and again, one of the biggest reasons that a pump fails is that screen will get clogged or high calcium deposits will fill inside this assembly that you saw in that schematic and it'll get all plugged up in the pump and the pump won't work right. A uh, motor will overheat trying to push water through and you end up getting a failure over time. But again, nine years, not bad. As I showed you in part three, you can see here in my bag, I got all of my stuff here. This goes with me. And here's some of the other stuff that I always carry, right? I got heat shrink jackets here for, the, for my electrical connections. I have spade connectors. I have more spade connectors in here. I have a whole assortment of things that I need to use all the time when I'm doing on, when I am fixing electrical things. I have a wide assortment of zip ties and a crimping pair of pliers for my spade connectors. So let's take a look at the new pump. And you can see it has the same connectors here as the other one does. And that's where I'm going to put those other parts that I took off. So looking at these two pumps, the old pump has a black and red wire wired into a plug. The new pump only has bare wires. How am I, gonna, how am I going to hook these, this pump to that other connector where it'll come into here? I'll show you how we're going to do that. We're going to take my pliers here, and I'm going to come back a little ways to give me some room here, because I like to have extra room on my, on my wires. So I'm going to cut it back about here, and about here. Just cut off the plug, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to put the plug on the new pump. So here's how we're going to do that. Remember again in part three I covered tools and this is one of my favorite tools. It's a stripping tool, a wire stripping tool. So when you have wires that look like this and you need to connect them to something, you got to strip off that plastic. See how easy that is? Isn't that cool? I just love this tool. You come back and do it again. You just grab where you want it, 
and now I have bare wires. Now we're going to come over here and we're going to find a spade connector that will fit this thickness of wire. And I found two sets of spade connectors, okay? So you have a male and a female part and they just slide in like that and that's how we're going to make the connection. And I have two set I have two sets, one for each wire. We'll put the other set on the ends of the wires of the pump. What I like to do when I'm doing stuff like this is I like putting a little dialectic grease just a little bit on that male part. It makes those spade connectors go in real easy. Also prevents corrosion and that type of thing. Before I put these connectors on here and crimp them on, I like to use some heat shrink material so that it so I'll be able to heat shrink around and seal this completely. Okay. So how the way you do that is you take a little piece, maybe about like that, and cut that off and you slide it on the wire first. Okay. Then you take the spade connector and you put that on and, and can you see how that wire goes right through there? Okay. And then you take your crimping tools and you put it right there. You see where that is? And you push down and push it down again and then tug on it. That is good and tight. Okay, that's tight. Now I take this little piece and I push it right up over there. And I take a lighter and you put a lighter over it. And you just kind of rotate it like this here. And what this does is that it's called a heat shrink shield. And as you apply heat, that rubber shrinks and it wraps around the wire and the spade connector. Okay. So I've completed the job. I took the old plug that we cut off the old pump and I put on female spade connectors on the ends of those. And then I put the male part of the spade connector on the new pump. So now when we connect these together, I have my plug that will go right into the existing power supply. Okay, so now for the next step, we want to put a little bit of Teflon tape on the new pump on these outlets here. So you always want to put on Teflon tape in a clockwise position. Doesn't need a lot, couple three wraps and that's it. And the reason you want to go clockwise is that when you put things on, when you put your attachments on there, you're actually turning it and tightening it in the way that the tape was put on. And now we have Teflon tape on both ends. Okay, so we have the the screen bowl on and you always want to make sure that this is facing down. Okay. The bowl and the motor are both parallel with each other. Oh, and you'll notice I did not put Teflon tape on this side of the bowl. Okay. This is where that plex fitting goes. No need to put Teflon there just here and here where it attaches to the pump. So now let's go into the wet bay again and uh, let's put this thing back in there. Okay, so here we are. I have installed the four screws. One, two, three, four. So that's where we are now. Here is my plex fitting that feeds the water from the fresh water tank. We're going to tighten that. And remember what I said there? Hand tight. And this is where my other adapter goes. And when I turn on the power supply on the switch, Hear it? It is now working. And as an added precaution, I don't want these spade connectors to ever touch because that could short out the motor or blow a fuse or what have you. So what I'm going to do, remember we put that dialectic grease on there, on those spade connectors? I'm going to take a little bit of brake cleaner and I'm just going to gently wipe those connectors off on the outside. Then I'm going to take some electrical tape and I'm going to wrap those spade connectors 
with black tape. Now I can go ahead and take my zip tie and put it around all the wires, keep them tucked nicely out of place, cinch it up a little bit, get everything into position where I want it, clip the extra right here, and there you have it. Okay, I wanna elaborate just a little bit on something that I said over there on that install. I mentioned that Joni and I, we use our water pump a lot. And I wanna kinda of explain that just for a little bit. For example, like when we were coming up here, we stayed at a Cracker Barrel. We boom docked at Cracker Barrel. Well, we don't have any place for hookups, so we use our water pump and our fresh water tank. You just never know what's going to happen when you're on the road. You could have a roadside emergency. You might get hung up uh, in any number of situations where here you are, you're stranded or you're, you had to stop somewhere for an emergency. You want to be able to have water on board and that pump working right so you can utilize that. But I'm going to give you another really good reason on why you should have a good working water pump and use your fresh water tank. Because I know some of you, you're either afraid to use your water, uh, your fresh water tank, you think it might be unsafe, you're not sure how to use it, what have you. I know there's a lot of you out there that think like that. But I want to explain to you how Joni and I use our fresh water tank and our uh, water pump. I have a really good friend who has taught me a lot of what I'm sharing with you over the past few years. He's taught me a lot about electrical and the, the water heater and a few other things. But this guy's been uh, RVing for 30 plus years, okay? This guy's a really smart cookie. And a few years ago, in his RV, he was hooked up to a regular city water as we all do and they went to bed and during the night he had to get up and go to the bathroom and when he slipped off to the bed put his feet on the ground there was water on the floor it just totally destroyed the whole floor he had to pull up the whole flooring put new flooring and all that and ever since then what he does is at nighttime he turns the city water off turns the water pump on to, you know, the last minute things you're going to do before you go to bed, brush your teeth and what have you. And then right before they go to bed, they turn off the water pump. And that's exactly what Joni and I do. Whenever we leave the RV, whether it's to go to the store, go to the pool for the afternoon, go shopping, it doesn't matter. When we leave the RV for an extended period of time, we walk over and we turn off the water. There are hundreds of different water connections throughout the RV, and any one of those fail, you're gonna have water in the RV. So it's just best and it's very safe just to go and just turn it off. When you come back to the RV, just go turn it back on. What Joni and I do, as our friend has taught us to do, when we're all through eating dinner and we're kind of settling in for the evening, we'll go turn the water off, we turn our water pump on, and we use our fresh water during the evening and always turn that water pump off at night time before you actually go to bed. And that's why we are so dependent on our uh, water pump and our fresh water tank. It's really a must have when you're RVing. As I said in the beginning of this video and in that three part series that I did, this is just one of high priority crucial parts that we carry with us. I carry a, an extra serpentine belt I carry extra capacitors for our air conditioner and a few other things. But these are things that if you get broken down on the side of the road, like if a belt breaks, man, you're in trouble if you don't have a spare belt. I don't want to wait for an emergency to happen and then hope I can find something online or go to a store or something. So again, I encourage you to go through your coach and make a list of what crucial things you should be carrying at all times. And that way, you're gonna be prepared if something happens on the road. Oh, oh, and don't forget, as always, everything I used over here, the, my tools, my heat shrinks, all that stuff, I'll put those links in the, in the description text. Just go to the top of this page where the video is, you'll see the description text and show more. Click show more, scroll down, I'll have all the links right there, very easy to get. And by the way, using those links to buy your products or whatever, the gear that we show you, it's a great way to su support our channel. It's a, it's a great way to say thank you, Martin. Thank you, Joni, for putting on these videos. So, as always, guys, 
if you liked this video. If this video helped you, you said, wow, Martin, that's great. Give me a like button. That tells me that you liked it. And maybe you have some other little comments that you would like to add on special little tips that you learned. I'd love to hear your comments. It helps others too. As others read, they can see comments. Also, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please consider subscribing. It's free. Just go and click subscribe, ring the bell off to the right, and you'll be notified the next time we upload our fantastic DIY how-to videos. Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> anyway, guys, glad you stayed with us. I hope this was helpful. Until next time, this is RV Street. Stick around.